And in business, the International Monetary Fund staff team, led by Amini Mati, Senior Resident Representative and Mission Chief for Nigeria, during its annual Article 4 consultation on Nigeria's economy, has said the pace of economic recovery remains slow, as declining real incomes and weak investments continue to weigh on economic activities. Meanwhile, the National Bureau of Statistics on Tuesday also revealed that inflation has again rising to 12.13%. I am now joined by Andrew Nevin. He is a partner and chief economist at PricewaterhouseCoopers. Andrew, thank you for joining me. It's great to be here, Irene. Yes, thank you. certainly. Now, the IMF in 2019, they had um, our economic growth, according to them, was going to be 2.3%. And now in 2020, it has been revised downwards to 2%. What's your reaction to this? Well, I, I don't think it's a big surprise. I mean, uh, people remember back at the beginning of January when the United States uh, assassinated the leader of the Revolutionary Guard in Iran and oil price spiked up to 70 and people said that would help us uh, this year. And of course, now it's turned around with coronavirus. It just shows you how volatile these markets are and, and we're seeing a reduction in the oil price and a reduction in growth rate. So, but it also highlights, to be honest, we haven't made as much progress as we need to in Nigeria on diversification over the last five years. Because again, when oil price dips, we're saying we're going to have reduced growth this year. And does it bother you the fact that, or do you at any point envision a point where we would not be extremely affected by volatility of oil prices? Well, I think that, of course, the, the country has produced the same amount of oil for a long time, and the country produces more oil. So we often say 2 million barrels a day, but I think we consume in Nigeria 400,000. So it's only 1.6, and of course the population is growing. So there's less and less oil per person, effectively. Mm -hmm. So it has less and less, it should have less and less impact. And of course, PwC wrote the paper last year that said, actually, our biggest export is not oil, it's people. Uh, and we want our biggest export to be other agricultural products. We want it to be uh, services. We we can export from here so we need to get that diversification going faster and moving forward we saw the report by the national bureau of statistics which you know showed that now inflation is at 12.13 percent as of december it was at 11.98 percent what's your take on this and what do you think the government can do within the short term to long term to curb this particular Well, I situation. think um, it's a good question. I mean, I think you know, we haven't really commented on the border closure because when we hear federal government officials speak, they say the primary reason for the, the border closure is the security of the nation. So we understand that. I mean, but from an economic perspective, also understand it has an impact uh, on, it's not a big surprise that the people in agriculture can't in the course mm. of two or three months produce that much more. I mean, obviously they're, they're trying there. Um, so not a big surprise that inflation has jumped up. But the general inflation number is maybe not that important. What's really important is what's happening to the price of staple commodities around, mm, food in, price. In, 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 around the country. And that jumped up even more. So that is worrying. And it just highlights how critical it is for the agricultural sector to get moving. And of course, but the federal government is trying. The uh, commercial banks are trying. I was at a big event with Echo Bank, Sterling Bank in the last few weeks about it. So I mean, the country is trying. I'm sure we'll produce more food over the next few years. I, I visited, I visited um, some parts of the northern region sometime last year, late last year, and I realized that with the local farmers, they're still involved in a lot, a lot of local farming procedures. Mechanized farming hasn't really hit them very hard. You know, that's, that's accurate. We haven't mechanized the farming. We haven't yet really increased the yields. We've brought some more land under cultivation. But I think one of the other problems we're having in agriculture is we don't get accurate data. So uh, those mm -hmm. of you who follow me on Twitter might have seen three weeks ago, we were, there was a big, we were discussing on Twitter how much cashews does Nigeria actually produce? And we couldn't really determine. How much rice does Nigeria produce? So the federal government said 8 million tons. Is that really accurate? So we're having a real problem with the basic data that's mm -hmm. happening in agriculture. What can we do about it, really? Well, I mean... Is this it, a dead end? No, I think, I mean, mm -hmm. I think one of the things, I mean, I think the situation's improving because, in fact, there are now groups that are working with uh, spatial data, geospatial data, satellite data, local on the ground, identity mm -hmm. of farmers, mm -hmm. companies like Agrimol. So we're going to get there, but the traditional way of sort of sampling is not going to do it. We need some technological leaps in the way data is collected to have a better, better view of it. But also that also relates to the inflation numbers. We need to have sort of automated ways of knowing what the price of a commodity is mm -hmm. all around the country at, the, at any point in time.
But looking, still taking a look at the inflation figures, this simply means that in terms of the purchasing power of Nigerians, it's definitely reducing, right? And then the IMF um, report uh, during the course of the consultation did mention that um, we'd also be experiencing declining real income. Yeah, now there is, you feel this pressure at all levels of uh, Nigerian society. I mean, the, the middle class is squeezed. Many of them are leaving, as you know, to Canada, to my home country in many cases. The bottom of the pyramid is being squeezed by food prices. We see it in some of the publicly listed companies uh, mm -hmm. who produce fast-moving consumer goods or consumables. The, their results, they're being squeezed. So the, you know, there is a real, there is mm -hmm. declining income per capita in Nigeria, and every Nigerian is, is feeling it right now. All right, thank you so much. Because of time, that's all we can have. It's always a pleasure having you. Thank you, so thank you so much. Thank you so much. Certainly.